Hey guys, um, welcome back again. I have another update I'd like to talk to you about. I kind of wanted to put it in its own video because um, I feel like it's uh, something that people might want to be like searching for and want might want to know more about and know other families like this. But Ren, Ren is a medical mystery. As you've seen from other videos, we have so many specialties that she sees. And um, her official diagnosis from Ukraine was um, uh, FAS, which is fetal alcohol syndrome. I guess because she had the facial features when um, she was born, they assumed, yep, that's what she's got. And it's a good assumption. I mean, Ukrainians are more prone to drinking during pregnancy. There's a lot of cases of FAS, especially from adopted children that come from there. So um, it was a fair assumption to make. I, I don't, I don't, that's one thing I don't get mad at Ukraine for as far as their medical stuff goes. Like, um, but anyways, she has a million things that are weird and different about her that are just, um, like her coanal atresia, which is how one of her nostrils was blocked, that surgery she had to have. Um, that is a red flag right there. Apparently that's something that pops up like with charge syndrome a lot, which is a genetic condition. And it pops up with other um, genetic conditions. It's like one of those things that makes doctors, it's actually the thing that made the doctors finally give me a referral to genetics, even though I've been asking for one for years for her, because I've been like, in the back of my head, I've always been like, something is genetically different about this child. Like I could list 20 things that are um, definite major differences. Um, she sees like 10 specialists, I think. Um, and it's just seems more likely than not that there's something genetically wrong with her. And I don't want to say wrong, but different about her. Um, anyways, we finally got into genetics like a, a year ago, I think. And, um, he went through everything, all the issues, all the stuff that we've got and gave her like a thorough top to bottom exam, the way a geneticist does. Like he's looking at the things that I'm pointing out. Like, I'm like, you know, I've noticed her hands don't, you know, do this, this thing, like the way her hands go. Like if you and I straighten her hands, we go straight, you know, you make your hands straight. She goes, her goes like, hers go like this, like they're all like that. That's her straightening her hands. Like can't. And it's not like she has cerebral palsy or, um, uh, arthrogryposis or something. It's only when she's trying to straighten her hands that all of a sudden they go all like, turns out that's actually called something. Um, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I will add it right here when I look it up after I'm done filming this. So, um, that she has that, or, you know, that, uh, her ears are like not only lower, low set, which is an FAS thing, but they're also like t tilted back, which is something I hadn't really noticed. Um, he noticed several things that I actually hadn't noticed. Like she had a, a divot in her ear or something like, I don't know, these weird little tiny things that you don't even think are, they're just uniquenesses, but actually they're genetic, um, little red flags that a geneticist sees and goes, mm, something's going on here. So he, the first thing we did is I said, you know, what about charge? Because, you know, the coanal treasure, he said, absolutely. We have tests for charge and it could be charge. He's like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was charge, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it's not charge and it's something more, um, rare than that. So he did set her up for a charge then like this, um, kind of like micro array, I think is what it's called. It's for the initial, like we're scanning for a bunch of common things. Both of those came back negative. It took like three months, which sucks, but they were both negative. So, you know, he, we do a video call and he's like, uh, I think she needs to have a, the full genetic panel where they, uh, do her whole genome and they look for any misspellings, basically m deletions or misspellings or stuff like that. And he said, I think she needs to do that. Now insurance is probably not going to prove it. We actually had to get her, she has Medicaid, but we had to get her BCMH to diagnostic to cover the cost of it because a Medicaid won't cover it. But he's like, I think she needs it. And, um, I said, I agree. So we signed her up for BCMH. She was approved. We ran the test and that test took several months to come back. I don't even know. Gosh, I think we talked in August 
and the test didn't come back. Like we, he set the appointment where he would, we would reconvene when the test would be by the, it should be back by now. That was February guys. The end of February is when I met with him and he goes, so every, most everything was normal. He said, but there is a misspelling on one gene. And he said, this misspelling is nothing that has ever been seen before. He's like, there is no other person in the, the DNA database that has the same misspelling, but it is on the CDK13 gene. And there is a syndrome, a disorder on that gene. And the other people affected with it don't have the same misspelling as other versions, but there's only 40 individuals with this. So, but she is an individual of her, uh, in and of herself. He says, but the thing that's interesting about this syndrome is that the um, the traits, the things that are, um, wrong with the person or different, um, line up really well with her. Like there is, um, intellectual disability, which, um, she definitely has that. And the facial features match up that, um, for, and he said, I even looked at all the pictures on his, like, you know, his doctor thing that he could see the pictures of kids that have been of the 40 people that are diagnosed with that. And he said, they look like rent, like he's like, they look like her and, um, heart defects, which she has, it's a major heart defect. Um, goodness. Now I can't remember what the other, uh, he said one other thing. I don't remember what the other thing was, but it's only four of the things she's got going on. But I'm like, but, but he's like, but this is, he said, I actually sent off a, an email to the doctor. He goes, I know the doctor who diagnosed, who, who got to name this syndrome, but they just name it after the, um, the things that are wrong now. They don't like give it like Dr. Hoffman's disorder or whatever they're called. It's called blah, 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 blah. I'll post it here. Cause I don't remember. I know the intellectual, um, um, differences was, part of it. That's not the right word. But anyways, so he said to look it up and, um, that he would send off a letter to this doctor because he knows this doctor it was actually his teaching doctor, the one who diagnosed this for the first time. So he said he sent a letter off to him and said, Hey, look here, there's, um, this kid who has a different misspelling on the same gene in a different place, but, um, she seems to fit. Does she, can she have this diagnosis kind of thing? So, and I set off to Google because I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to Google. Well, I Google and I find that there's a Facebook group for this CDK 13, um, misspelling group. And I found it and there's more than 40 people because apparently it hasn't been updated since 2019. Well, it's 2021. There's now 170 families in the group and they've all had this diagnosis. They all have that and not only that so i joined the group and i got to meet other other kids or seen other kids on there that look like ren and not only that they have a research study that someone in canada is doing on her particular um thing and i was able to sign her up for it so they will take her dna and they are the research that they're doing they're looking for like treatments like um genetic um potential treatments which you know, probably wouldn't be something that would help her for many years, but if it did, it would, that would be great. It could be, um, you know, um, some kind of help for her or for future kids. I'm all for medical research. That's not going to hurt somebody. It's like, awesome. Cool. Take, take her, take her a little bit of DNA and see what you can figure out from my unique child who is one of everything, not one in a million. She is the only child with this particular uh, misspelling that has ever been, um, that is in the database. That That is known. Like he said, the gene base said back to him that this this particular substitution has never been seen before. So um, she is unique. So, and not only that, on this group, I get to read a bunch of posts and, and listen to people talking and apparently other traits that she has do fit under this because now they have more than 40 people, even though the medical literature is back saying there's 40 people, there's 170 something people that are affected by this. So they have a larger like cohort to like compare, um, traits that, that fit under, and there's more that she definitely fits under. And I'm like, wow, that is, that's her. Ooh, that one's her too. Oh, that's really her. So it's been very eye opening to, um, 
get to know what what's going on with Ren. Like she, we know what it, it is. Like what is Ren? It's not FAS. It's you know a genetic misspelling that has you know wreaked havoc on her and given her the different things that she contends with and that we contend with for her. Um, but anyways, uh, I'll show you some of the stuff you can find online just to see some of the cute pictures and see what you think. Do you think these kids look like Ren? I, I mean, I do. Um, but, uh, yeah, Ren is doing really good. Um, by the way, she is learning how to read. She has been trying to learn with phonics since we, since we got her, but it has not worked. So the teacher at the end of last year decided to start doing the Edmark program with her. And it's been amazing. She can read like 70 words now and she can put together sentences. And that's amazing to me. And it's so cute. You have to see. The A box, yes. The boy has a banana. Is that a banana? Nope. nope. Good job. Wow. I like pizza. Good. Hmm. Okay. Um, I don't think you know any of those words. Sit, down, come. Hmm. The hard one. Okay, uh, sit, wait, no, it's, okay, sit. Sit down and come. Come. Mm-hmm. Sit. Mm -hmm. sit, Come, wait. Down. Down. Read the sentence and see if it's right before you check sit, it. Sit. Come. Come. Sit. Sit. Down. Down. Come sit down. Yeah. Is that a sentence? Mm -hmm. Okay, then check it. Okay. Good. That's cake. That's what? I. Do you know that one? Water. Want. Want. Cake, I want. Put it in the right order. I mm -hmm. want mm -hmm. cake. Excellent. Check it. Oh, oh. Go back. Okay, check it. Yeah. Good. My baby girl's reading. It's great. It's good for a mother's heart. Especially since she's here all the time and is basically homeschooling her. The teacher sends home stuff, but... Um, I get to feel like I'm not totally failing her by COVID keeping her home. She's, she's learning to read and, um, yeah, it's really good. And Hannah has learned, by the way, to count all the way to like 12, which is, sounds like a little thing, but it's a huge thing because it's taken her a long time to understand what that is and to do it. And I'm very happy for her. I know the side note, we're talking about Ren, but Hannah can count to, to 12 now. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that as well. So yeah, if you're searching for this video because you were wondering about the, your child who's been diagnosed with this same thing, look on Facebook because there is a group of people, of parents who have children um, with this same syndrome that will offer you so much advice and, uh, you know, fellowship to know that you're not alone and your child's not alone. Um, it's it really kind of completed the puzzle for me. Like now I have answers and that's been great because I've been questioning this for three years and now I know. I mean, other parents, she's 13, other parents might have been questioning this for 13 years with their child. Um, so I do encourage you to look up the Facebook group and join it because um, it could really help. So have a good day, guys. Dance, dance, Kyle. I will dance, I will sing. Be bad for my kid. The Lord is in the ring. There's passion in my soul. Oh, dance, dance, Kyle. Dance, dance, Kyle.